Yeah, and uh, regarding this only, I wanted to ask. Like last time, you had uh, said that sometimes you can. I I remember the statement as it is. You had made that sometimes you can see Saturn spoiling the chart. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you know, some people told me to ask you that. What do you mean by Saturn spoiling the chart? I mean, on an astrological perspective. Oh my God! I see it all the time. <laughs> but but but. You have to be very careful. I never tell a person your chart is ruined because of Saturn. What I do is this. If I see Saturn close to the ascendant, within four or five degrees, it's very bad for confidence. Okay. If I see Saturn close to the sun, within three, four degrees, close to the moon, three, four degrees, or close to the ascendant ruler, or or aspecting the ascendant degree within three or four degrees. Any one of those can destroy a chart. Now, they don't actually destroy the chart. What they destroy is the person's confidence. Uh -huh. Then you look in the horoscope for the talents and the abilities. So what I do at the very beginning of the chart, I will say to the person, you have talents and abilities. I'm going to tell you what they are. And then you have a tendency to hold back and to say, I'm not good enough. I don't deserve this. Who am I? I better not. I better wait. I better get a degree. So I tell them, you have these abilities and you have a tendency to hold yourself back. The entire, the entire horoscope, your entire life is going to depend upon how you handle the confidence issue. First of all, you can get counseling, you can go to therapists, you can do self-development, you can do meditation, you can do all, all kinds of things to, to strengthen the confidence. Now, the confidence is never going to change in a huge way. A person who is born five foot four is not going to be a basketball player. They're too small. So a person with a, with a prominent Saturn like that afflicting the chart, they're never going to have huge confidence, but they can work on the confidence issue so it's not devastating. And then I explain to them, even though the voice in the head says, I'm not good enough, I can't do this, I better wait, it'll never work. Even though the voice is there, you have to ignore the voice. You can't stop it. You can't stop, the, you can't stop that voice. That's the karma. From the day you are born till the day you die, if Saturn is very intense like that, you're, you're, you're always, I'm not good enough, I'm no good, I don't have this, I don't have that. That's always there. But you can, if, if you know, if the astrologer says, look, you have a magnificent house, house of art, the third house and the fifth house, and Venus, they're magnificent. So even though you have no confidence, your abilities are great. So you go for that. Or your ability in, in uh, religion and philosophy is fantastic, even though there's no, con whatever it is. Okay. Now, the reason that I do that is very interesting because in my beginning days of astrology, I would see these charts and I would start, I didn't want to talk about the negative stuff. I would tell them, oh, there's some lack of confidence, but I wouldn't make a big deal of it. Then I would talk about all the money that was in the horoscope, the career success was in the horoscope, the abilities with, with uh, partners. And at the end of the reading, because I, I don't ask for a lot of questions, I like to do the reading objectively, then they can tell me after I've spoken. So I would get done with the reading, and what do I find out? Well, I haven't really made any money. Well, I, I really haven't <laughs> followed a career. Well, I really haven't done this. And then I say, I say to myself, Saturn has ruined the chart. But Saturn has not ruined the chart. The person has allowed their confidence to ruin it. Okay? So... I would feel very stupid telling them how great the chart was, and then they tell me I have nothing. <laughs> so, so I didn't want to be put in that position of being wrong. So in the beginning of the reading, I would say, I'm going to tell you, you have great abilities and you have a tendency to hold yourself back. So I'm going to tell you the abilities. And that way they could see whether, you know, whether they could, they, they could see the possibilities of what they could achieve. Yeah, and uh, apart from the criteria which you said that Saturn aspects the ascendant or the ruler of the ascendant or sun moon, uh, have you also seen like, for example, in this case, the 
ascendant lord is in adusthana although it is not afflicted by saturn so have you seen if the ascendant lord is in 6 8 12 or it is in debility for example then also that happening yes no question about it okay. i have definitely see, you'll definitely see that you see you'll see all kinds of you'll see all kinds of karmic issues you know uh with you know th there's 10 different ways 20 different ways a planet can be ruined there's 10 different ways a planet can become powerful but i must tell you that, that that there is something special about saturn the saturn affliction there's no doubt if if a person has the first house is taurus and the ruler of the first house is venus and it's in the 20 25th 26th degree of virgo fallen maybe aspected by saturn or something or some other malefic there's no question the confidence is is no good but there's something very specific about when the planet is with saturn saturn is the quintessential planet of karma of course if venus is the first house ruler and it's fallen in virgo that's karma of course and the person will have problems but there is something about saturn that is so unyielding saturn does not let up if you if you're doing a prashna or something and the person asks a question about something they want to accomplish and saturn is right there it doesn't matter what they do it's not going to work because it's saturn saturn is karma and when you come up against saturn you do not win saturn wins so in any case um you know but but now please understand something people that are spiritual lots of people that are spiritual are going to have prominent saturns saturn aspecting the sun saturn aspecting the ascendant because saturn is lord shiva if you don't have a saturn aspecting some personal planets there's not much ability to be introspective to meditate to be detached from the world in order to have some detachment from the world some separation some so that when bad things happen you don't go crazy you need to have saturn you know having some aspects so i don't worry too much but about saturn but it's when it gets tight it's when it gets very very tight 1 2 3 degrees with a personal influence then you have a situation to deal with okay okay so you are saying apart from the other placements you see if saturn is more uh, closely linked then the struggle is more hard more harder it's 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 a distinction but it's a strange distinction yeah. if you asked if you said to me what would you rather have would you rather have the ascendant ruler fallen Mm. in a in a in a bad house and fallen or would you rather have the ascendant ruler within 1 degree of saturn who the heck can say which is better and which is worse but but, but <laughs> there's something about there's something about saturn that if you have it with saturn you're not you're not going to change it very much it's that's just you know and i i i don't i don't want i don't want to say that saturn is worse than something else i don't want to say that but but there's just a different feeling to it there's a different feeling to it okay and uh, in your idea uh, why have you seen because generally saturn is very much talked so i just want to extract very as much, much saturn generally is saturn is much more feared and talked and discussed within the astrological community actually so what's feared what's feared a lot is rahu and ketu yeah so i was thinking that when this topic has come out i want to extract as much information regarding saturn also from you <laughs> with with you know people fear rahu they say oh i'm coming to rahu dasha this is terrible and i want to pull my hair out rahu represents insatiable cravings and desires for worldly power oh, okay. actors win oscars in rahu people become powerful in rahu so rahu is not to be feared ketu is spiritual metaphysical now if they're placed in bad placements they can be they can be problematic but people should not fear rahu and ketu they're often very good 
Depends on the house they're in. Rahu in the tenth house for a career is spectacular. You know, Rahu in the third house is great for the arts and courage and activity. It just depends on the house. But um, I don't know. Saturn is Saturn is <laughs> Lord Shiva, and 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 Saturn gives you know Saturn gives talents and abilities too. So in the case of Albert Einstein, the ascendant ruler is Mercury. And Mercury is within, uh, let's see, one or two degrees. He has Mercury in, yeah, ten, yeah. he has Mercury in almost 11 degrees, 10 degrees, 58 minutes of Pisces, and Saturn in 12, 12 degrees. This is basically Mercury and Saturn are within one degree. Yes, yes. And Mercury is Nietzsche. Mer Mercury is fallen, okay? Yes. So, Mercury rules the ascendant. So the confidence is weak. This is a classic case of a person becoming very famous, even as badly as the confidence is. You see that? Oh, okay. You see that? So, the, the, appearance, the appearance of, uh, of Einstein was, it was not good. Oh. For a man this famous, he looked very, he didn't care what he looked like. You know, that's, uh -huh. but, but, so, so this is a real subtlety. Saturn will often destroy a planet. The planet, the planet simply cannot handle the, 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 the Saturn energy. However, Saturn with a planet can also give it form and structure. So I, my brother, I have a brother that has Mars conjunct Saturn, very tight, and in sports, he was magnificent. Oh. His, his temper is extreme. So, mm. and he has, he has Mars abilities. He has abilities with mechanical skills and things like that. Most people, the Mars will suffer. But a lot of times Mars opposite Saturn gives mechanical technical skills. Mars conjunct Saturn can make Mars strong. So with, with Mercury Saturn, the most typical thing that happens with Mercury Saturn, well, not the most, but one of the typical things, the person at a very young age feels very stupid because oh. Mercury is with Saturn, it's very slow. So the person thinks, I'm not smart, I'm not smart. Many people with Mercury Saturn feel that. And then because they feel like they're not smart, they start to work. Saturn gives form and structure to Mercury and they start to work on their, on their thoughts. They start, start to work on knowledge. They start to work on education and they become smarter than other people. Okay. Okay. So now this is very, very difficult because when I'm doing a chart and I see Saturn with a planet, I understand that the planet will be harmed. The houses that the planet rules will be harmed by being with Saturn. But that planet, in a number of cases, winds up to be stronger than ever because it gets the form and structure that Saturn gives. I've been at this for 35, 40 years. I still cannot, if I see a Saturn conjunction with a planet, I don't know when. I don't know which horoscopes that Saturn's going to make that planet stronger. I'm, I'm never sure. I know it's going to cause difficulties, but sometimes it will give form and structure. Saturn is a planet of concrete, concrete building. It's the most solid planet like that. Anyway, just notice, just notice for the mathematician, Venus is in the 25th degree of Pisces. Oh, for Ramanujan, you're saying? No, 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 for Einstein. Aha, uh -huh. okay. For Einstein, Venus is three degrees away. It's, it's two degrees away from the 20. It's two degrees and two minutes away from the exact highest point of exaltation. That's math. That's, oh. mathematic, that's mathematical ability. And you can see the mathematical ability, it, it, it's, it's from the poor of Apunya. The Venus rules the fifth house, poor of Apunya, like Ramanya John. And, 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 and so the poor of Apunya is connected to career success because Venus is exalted in the 10th. It's connected to Venus. 
Now, Venus could be art, right? But this is not the chart of an artist. This is more the chart of a mathematician, a genius. And the Saturn Mercury, even as afflicted as Mercury is, um, that Saturn Mercury had a part in his in his in his genius. He, you know, this is very interesting because people with Mercury in Pisces can be confused. They can have confusion. Einstein said, "The reason we're having a storm." Einstein said, "The reason." that he could gain certain insights that other people didn't was because he was comfortable in confusion. So when he would be doing these mathematical problems, there'd be tremendous confusion. Most people that are in confusion, they want to run away. But he was oh. comfortable. He, was, he said, I was comfortable being confused. And he would be, he'd be working out the problem even while he was confused. That might have something to do with Venus, uh, with Mercury being in Pisces. And it is also getting Nietzsche Bunga from Venus, I guess. Yeah, I'm not big on Nietzsche Bunga myself because it only works 10, 20. In my experience, it works 10 or 20 percent of the time. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the only way I would say that you would test whether Nietzsche Bunga was really working if he comes to Mercury, Dashas, and Muktis and has good results, oh. then we can say it works. Otherwise, I mean, look, this, this guy's going to be famous anyway with that highly exalted Venus in the 10th house and the 10th ruler in the 9th. Uh, he was going to have fame anyway. Um, but the, you know, whether Mercury is helping uh, from, from, from Nietzsche Bunga, I, I don't know. Because most people that I find with Nietzsche Bunga, they still have the problems, big problems from the fallen planet. Yeah, and now here, another thing I would want to ask you, like uh, you had said that fame can come from the first or the 10th house. So here we see the 10th house is very strong. So when you say that it is strong, because there's a general notion that any planet in the 10th and the 11th is good, but uh, generally they also say that benefits can give things more easily. So do you use that dictum here that 10th house is strong because it has four planets or it has planets like Mercury, Venus, and you would say that Saturn and Sun, which are also there, they can also cause some friction. So how do you see that? The, first of all, you've got, first of all, the strongest things in a horoscope to me is a stationary planet mm -hmm. and a planet that is very, very close to its highest point of exaltation. Mm -hmm. Those to me are like extremely strong. So the Jupiter 10th ruler in the ninth is very important. That's a very good placement. The highly exalted Venus in the 10th is very, very important. As far as benefics and malefics, I love to see Rahu in the 10th house for career success. I love to see Mars in the 10th house for career success. I love to see the sun in the, in the 10th house for career. Assuming they're not afflicted and fallen. I love those. I also like benefics very much, you know, Jupiter, Venus, Moon. So to me, it doesn't really matter so much whether they're benefics or malefics. Um, it's just a matter of how they're placed, you know, by, by the signs and things like that. In this case, the sun is there. But first of all, Saturn in the 10th house alone. I do not generally like that. Okay. Only because most people with Saturn in the 10th house hold themselves back. Oh, I better not do this. I better, I better wait till I have a degree. I'm not good enough. Most people do that. Saturn in the 10th house always creates a desire for a big career. Always. Okay. Because look, you have sun, moon, Mercury, slow moving. Then you have, I mean, sun, Mercury, Venus, those are moving fast. Saturn is the slowest moving planet in the Hindu system. So it's a very heavy influence. And for, for some people, the Saturn in the 10th house can be a very big career. Even the people that hold themselves back in the career, they want a big career. They just keep holding themselves back. 
a person with Saturn in the 10th house should do something that organizes for the most amount of people the best results. So administrators and organizers is 10th house Saturn. So if a person has Saturn in the 10th, you tell them you want to look and see how can I do the best effects for the most amount of people? And they will relate to that. But 70% of those people, they'll relate to it and then they'll think about it and they go, but I'm not good enough. That's just the way it works in practice. So I don't like Saturn in the 10th house very much unless there's other, like in this case, Saturn is helping all his, look at this. There's no energy here for family life. This is all about, this is all about career. So there wasn't much family life because all these planets are in the career house. Yeah. So sun is there, Venus is there, Mercury is there, Saturn is there. Saturn, Saturn in the 10th house, if you're not holding yourself back, means this enormous commitment to the career like that. I have Saturn in the fifth house. My commitment to raising my child for the first 18 years was humongous. It was huge because wherever, whatever house Saturn is in, a person has fears. There's no question. Saturn in the second, they fear no money. Saturn in the fourth, they fear their mother. They fear happiness. Saturn in the seventh, they fear they'll never get a good partner. Saturn causes fear. Okay. But Saturn also places huge commitment, huge commitment. So if the Saturn is used well, it, it, you know, Saturn would make a huge career. Okay. Yeah. And uh, ha have you seen uh, that Saturn if placed in houses like 6, 8, 12, because they say that malefics are very good in the Dustanas. So how have you seen that playing out? <laughs> I don't think any planets are good in Dustanas. <laughs> Um, no, no, I'm sorry. I very much like malefics in the sixth house. Mm -hmm. I very much like that. I don't like them in the eighth or the twelfth. Now, again, if they're well aspected, that's another story. Mm -hmm. But if you just take Mars in the eighth, Sun in the eighth, Saturn in the eighth, they, those are not going to function well. In the sixth house, the malefics give a strong appetite and they give you the ability to overcome enemies and jealous people and competitors and things like that. They, you know, so that I like, but you know, there's some rules they say, Oh, malefics are good in, in Dushtan is I, I don't, I don't find that. Okay. Okay. Nice. So now should we proceed to Albert Einstein's chart? Well, yeah, that's what I'm, I'm, I'm looking at that now. Yeah. <laughs> um, look at this eighth house, you know, uh, exalted Mars, hmm. exalted Mars in the eighth. So longevity, long life, money that could come in without having to work for it. But you see the family life is terrible. The, the Ketu in the second house, and the second house is Cancer, and Mars is aspecting its fallen sign, the second house. Now, first of all, first of all, the worst place for Rahu and Ketu is the second and eighth, or eighth and second. For family life, it's terrible. That means that in their early family life, they're going to have ups and downs, unhappiness in the family when they're growing up. Then when they, when they grow up and they have a marriage partner, there's arguing and ups and downs and fighting and friction. And if they come to a Rahu or Ketu Dasha or Bukti, more ups and downs in family life, always arguing, always bickering, always little issues coming up. But in this case, Mars is aspect, it's not just Ketu in the second, Mars is aspecting that fallen sign Cancer in the second house. This is very bad for his uh, one of his eyes. The right eye would be likely to be negatively af uh, affected. And um, money matters may have been difficult for a long time, but but it's more the family life that is that is really not not very good there. 
Um, and the happiness might be a little bit disturbed because of the moon, the moon fallen in the sixth house, oh, okay. aspected, aspected by Ketu. But this is a spiritual chart. You know, he made a lot of statements about the universe and God and nature. He had a strong faith in God. Jupiter is in the ninth house, of course. So that gives a good faith in God. The twelfth house is ruled by Venus, the 25th degree of Pisces, exalted fifth, twelfth house ruler. And then Rahu and Moon aspecting the twelfth house. And the moon's aspect is quite good because the moon is aspecting its exaltation sign, Taurus. So the 12th house for enlightenment, the ninth house for uh, you know, religion, philosophy, higher knowledge, very strong. Um, and it is important that Jupiter aspects his ascendant because otherwise that ascendant is completely weak. That Mercury fallen, conjunct with Saturn, very, very weak. But at least Jupiter aspects the ascending. It's not as good an, uh, it's not as good as a normal Jupiter aspect because it's aspecting Gemini, opposite Sagittarius's, uh -huh. opposite Jupiter's own sign. But still, it definitely helps. And then look at the genius mind. Jupiter aspects the fifth house and the fifth house ruler, highly exalted, so it's very good. Very good. Um, the fourth house does gain some benefit by those planets aspecting the fourth. It's got a lot of planets aspecting the fourth house. Venus, Saturn, Mercury, Sun, and Rahu all aspect the fourth house. It's very hard to tell exactly what that's going to do because there's so many different influences. But Mercury being fallen and with Saturn, causes more trouble to the Ascendant than it does to the fourth house. Okay. Because Mercury aspects the fourth house. Mm -hmm. and, it, and that's the exaltation sign of Mercury. So, so there is a lot of energy there. He might have had nice homes or cars or something after he was famous. Yeah, and another thing uh, people ask, so here uh, on this note only I wanted to ask this, like you said that uh, Rahu K2, if it is in 2A taxes, that can be difficult for family or initial part of family life. And then we have the fourth house. Then there's the seventh house. So in your experience in general, I'm asking about any malefics or any planets. If they are more prominently badly placed in the seventh house or which of these three houses, like second, fourth, seven, that you have seen them harming the marriage especially because many times... There is so much in a horoscope that you have to look at okay 